Okay, guys, welcome. Today we're going to talk about the concept of mathematical induction. Now, for the motivation for this, we're going to suppose that we want to determine what the sum of the first n odd numbers is. Is there a closed formula for this, right? So is there a way that if I can say if I want to add the first nine odd numbers, let's say, um, then can I plug in nine into some function and get what that sum is? All right, well, let's take a look. So if we list out the first 10 odd numbers, right, and we're do one all the way up to the 10th number, what do we get for a sum? Well, the first odd number, of course, is one, and the sum of just one is one. Now, the th for n is two, the first two odd numbers are one and three, and of course, their sum is four. First three odd numbers are one, three, and five, so we get nine. And of course, we can do that for all of these numbers up to 10, and we find that when we sum the first 10 odd numbers, we get 100. And of course, it looks like if you look at n and its relation to the sum, it looks like if we do n squared, that would get us the first odd num first n odd numbers sum, right? But of course, how can we know for sure? Is there a way that we could prove this, all right? Let's try proving it for general n, right? Well, the nth odd number is 2n minus one, right? So if you wanna say any odd number, you would say that it's 2n minus one, right? So our claim is that if I add one plus three plus blah, 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 all the way up to 2n minus one, that I get n squared, right? And we wanna prove this. Now, if we separate and we just look at the first n minus one odd numbers on one part of this, and then we consider the nth odd number sort of by itself, if we somehow knew that the first n minus one odd numbers was n minus one squared, then we'd have it, right? Because then we could replace this piece here with an n minus one squared, right? We could replace it with that. And then if we FOIL out n minus one squared, we would get n squared minus 2n plus 1. If I add that to 2n minus 1, that would give us n squared. And of course, that would prove the claim. Now, of course, the whole idea is why should we be allowed to make this assumption, right? Why are we allowed to make this jump? Okay. Well, what we did show is that if I find the sum of the first n minus 1 odd numbers to be n minus 1 squared, then it would follow from that that the sum of the first n odd numbers would have to be n squared, right? Now we saw that this was true for n equals one. And in fact, we saw that it was true for 10, right? All the way up to 10. But as soon as we have it true for n equal one, well, then we have it true for n equal two, right? Because if I say that n minus one, right, was n equal two, let's say, then I've shown it's true for n equals two, n equals three, n equals four, because if I've shown that it's true for one value, it's true for the next value, right? And since I've shown that it's true for n equals one, it's therefore true for two, which means it's therefore true for three, so on and so forth. And this is the proof technique that we refer to as mathematical induction. So essentially, if we want to prove a property about the positive integers, what we need to do is we prove that one has the property, and then we prove that if n minus one has the property, then n also has the property. And of course, those two things together show that every positive integer has this property, right? Because if one has the property, and then the, we say that if the previous number has the property, then the next number has the property, then if it's true for one, it's true for two, then it's true for three, so on and so forth. So to summarize, and if we want to prove by induction, the first thing that we do is we prove the statement is true for n equals one, right? And then that's what we refer to as the base case. And then in the next part, we prove the statement true for general n, and we consider this to be the inductive case. And what we do is we assume that the statement is true for n minus one, and we want to show that it's then true for n. 
right? And of course, if it's helpful, you can also assume that it's true for any previous numbers, right? N minus two, N minus three, or any number that's less than N, right? And sometimes that will help us. Now, sometimes we start with a different value of N for the base case. And the base case could be something like zero, two, three, four, five, or whatever. But as long as we start with the first value that we want to show this property is true for, and then show that it's true for every number after, after that, then essentially we've got it. All right, so let's look at an example. Let's say we want to prove that n factorial is an even number for n strictly bigger than one, right? So this is actually an example right away where our first number is two, right? Because when n is bigger than one, and of course n we're assuming here is an integer, our first number is gonna be two, right? So let's start with the base case. All right, we want to show that this is true, that n factorial is even when n is equal to two. Well, of course that's true, right? Because two factorial is two times one, which is two, and of course this is even. So this, is, this part's good, base case is done. Okay, and now for the inductive case. We're going to assume that n minus one factorial is even. All right, and then we want to show that n factorial is even. All right, and of course, how do you show that a number is even? You show that it's divisible by two, right? Or that it's a, uh, it's a multiple of two. Right, so if we want to assume that n minus one is even, and we want to show that n factorial is even, well, n factorial is n times n minus one factorial, right? And if n minus one factorial is even, that means that n minus one factorial is two times some number that we'll just call k, right? So then this means that we have n times 2k, which we can reorder as 2kn. And then if we let say k times n be m or something, right? Because the product of integers is still integers. So we'll just say this is some integer m. So this is 2n. Well, we've shown that n factorial is equal to two times m. So that means that n factorial is even, All right? So we've shown that if the previous number has the property, then the next number has the property. So we've shown the inductive case, right? So the base case and the inductive case together give us that n factorial is even, okay? And that's the idea. All right, let's look at another example. We wanna prove that the sum of the first n positive integers is n times n plus one over two. Okay, now if you saw this before, you probably saw sort of a goofy proof um, where you had sort of your sums with like one plus two plus blah, 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 plus n. And then if you write the other one this way, sort of backwards, well, you're gonna get that you have n plus one for all of these and you have n times so you get an n times n plus one, but you only want one of those sums, so you divide it by two, right? So that's sort of goofy, right? It's maybe not clear that you would, that would be your first go-to to try and prove this. And it turns out that it's very straightforward if you use induction, okay? So let's prove this using induction. All right, well, what's the base case here? Well, the base case is now n equals one, right? Because it's the first n positive integers. What's the first positive integer is n equals one, OK? 
Okay. Well, if n equals one, then we have one times one plus one over two. So this would be a two over two, which is one, right? So that's true, right? Because one is equal to one. So we're good there. Now for the inductive case, All right, we're going to assume that the sum of the first n minus one numbers is now replace n with n minus one in our definition. So we're gonna get n minus one times n minus one plus one over two which if we simplify would give us just an n times an n minus one over two. Okay, now we wanna show this, right? We wanna show that one plus two plus three plus blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna put my n minus one here cause we're gonna use it in a second plus n is equal to n times n plus one over two. All right, well, we know that if I look at the first n minus one numbers, we know that we can replace that with n times n minus one over two. So I have this part plus the n, okay? Now, if I add these two, I would wanna get a common denominator. So I'd wanna put this over two, but then multiply the top by two. And if I were to distribute this, I would get an n squared minus n plus two n over two. Well, now if I add them, I have n squared plus n over two, which is n times n plus one over two. So that's good. So we've shown the inductive step, so therefore we know that we are good here, right? So that concludes the proof. Okay, let's do one more example of proof by induction. So we want to prove that the sum of the first n powers of 2 is 2 to the n minus 1, right? So maybe if it's not clear, we want to show that 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2 plus two to the n is two to the n minus one. Wait a minute, that can't be right. What am I missing here? Um, let me see, let me make sure I copied this down right out of the textbook. Okay, I see what I'm missing here. So the idea is that if we're using the first n powers of two and I'm starting with zero, then this last one really should be a minus one. I wanna show this is two to the n minus one. Okay, yeah, that's better. So what I wanna do here is, let's say for example that I want, um, so I wanna prove this. So I wanna show that if I add all these things together, then I'm going to have that my base case is when n is equal to one, right? So the first n powers of two, this would be the first one, second one, third one. That's the nth power of two. All right, so it's a little confusing on the wording there, right? Well, now the base case for n equals one means I wanna show that two to the zero is equal to two to the one minus one. Right? Well, of course this is true because two to the zero is one and two to the one is two. And if I subtract one, I get that one is equal to one. Right, so that's true. Now for the inductive case, we're going to assume that it's true for n minus one. Right, so what we're assuming is that two to the zero plus two to the one plus blah, 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 plus two. Now to the n minus two is two to the n minus one minus one. 
right? And we want to show that two to the zero plus two to the first plus plus two to the n minus two plus two to the n minus one is two to the n minus one. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look. Well, we know that from our in inductive hypothesis, right, the thing that we assume was true, that this part is two to the n minus one, minus one, right? Well, now I'm adding, let me erase this here. Now I have plus two to the n minus one. Now, if we group these two things together, right, I have two to the n minus one plus two to the n minus one minus one, right? Well, what can I do with those? I can factor out a two to the n minus one, and I'll have one plus one. Well, what's one plus one? Of course, it's two. So we get two to the n minus one times two minus one. So I get two to the n minus one, right? Which of course is what we wanted to show, All right? So that concludes this uh, section on mathematical induction. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.